Welcome to the NWR Virtual Resources Series. My name is Kerry Stevenson. I'll be your host. And upcoming, we've got the Sierra Nevada Gold Story. Now, this is really exciting, ladies and gentlemen. It hasn't listed yet. They'll be listing in uh, first quarter 2022. Joining me today is uh, Peter Moore. He's the executive chairman. Now, they've got four to five projects, and these are these are pretty exciting projects. Peter, love to hear this story. It's an IPO for the first quarter next year. Let's uh, tell our listeners what's going on and what, what's got you hot under the collar with these projects. Oh, thanks, Kerry. Yeah, a pleasure to get the opportunity to talk to everybody today and introduce the Sierra Nevada Gold story. Um, I've been involved in Nevada for over 30 years in the mining and resources business and I uh, put this company together 10 years ago. So in the time we've got, I'll give you a quick snapshot um, of, of the company and, uh, and, and where we're heading. So uh, you can see that's a photo in the front there taken from one of our projects in uh, the Walker Lane trend in Nevada. So just get through the disclaimer. You can read that at your leisure. Um, the overview is, well, we've got an experienced team. We've got drill ready uh, gold and copper assets. We're excited to be, you know, um, involved with copper as well. Um, and we're in a globally recognized tier one mining jurisdiction. The key uh, people and myself um, and the other guys on the board, Alan Wilson was um, with uh, Anna Fagasta, head of their porphyry and copper division, as well as Anglo. So a very experienced guy and uh, you'll see why we've got him involved. And the other fellows are all very experienced. Brett Butler is the chief geologist. Brett's also uh, got significant equity in the company. Uh, Brett was with Citadel. He would drilled up and discovered the Jabal Sayed deposit in um, Saudi Arabia, which was a few years ago sold to um, sold out by Citadel to um, ultimately to Barrick for a couple of billion dollars. So well experienced in uh, drilling up discoveries. So, um, we've got some terrific shareholders, a really strong register. The former Citadel group who were involved with the Jabal Sayed project, uh, significant investors, uh, including Brett. Um, directors of management, twenty percent. Peter Woodford's a well-known um, oh, yeah. Mel Melbourne investor. Peter uh, is, uh, is is very active in this space, and he's a foundation shareholder. Actually, when I put the first seed together in two thousand and twelve, and a couple of other major. The other Saudi investor is another partner out of the Jabal Sayed project. So there's a connection there. The investment highlights: we've got five um, copper and gold assets, and they're ready to drill. We've got a 100% owned land package, large land package in Nevada, which is difficult to put together, and we've done that over a significant amount of time. We've got uh, two recent discoveries: uh, made a copper porphyry discovery of a brand new system, plus a uh, high-grade epithermal vein system. We put a discovery hole into in 2018. Um, we've got early resource potential on a number of high-grade projects in historic mining centres that have never been drilled. So pretty exciting, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, the difference here with Sierra Nevada Gold is that we don't have one project and four stocking fillers. There are four or five really strong projects, any one of which could be a company maker. Uh, we've already spent 10 million US. There's not many new listings anywhere that would have spent 10 million US on their projects prior to listing. Uh, that's been spent on generating the projects, generate a huge amount of data, flying um, uh, geophysics and uh, low altitude helimag uh, to get proprietary data sets to generate our projects. And we've made a couple of discoveries from that data. Uh, we've got a lot of that data to still prosecute. So we've got drill ready, high impact targets. So we're not spending money to generate targets. We've already got the targets that money spent. That's all going to go into drilling. Uh, the copper project is significant. That's a world-class tier one scale porphyry system that we discovered. Uh, it's been drilled. We put a couple of holes in it. We've proved the system. And you know anything about porphyry, you know, one good hole in one of those is a potential for massive uplift. So we're looking to drill uh, half a dozen holes in that project over the next year or so, um, uh, starting in next year. The gold projects are four high quality, high grade gold projects. They're um, all got early pathway to resources. And uh, I'll tell you about those in a minute. Um, and we've got an experienced team, obviously, there. That guy in the photo there is Brett, the uh, Chief Geo, and on our porphyry project. And with him is Greg Corbett, globally recognized porphyry expert who rates this as, a, as an A plus uh, drilling wow. opportunity. So he's pretty, he's pretty excited about it. He uses it in his lectures. He thinks it's a, a good story. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's exciting. On that uh, porphyry, we've also got uh, six major companies signed CAs and done uh, data room, detailed data room analysis of all of our data and all are interested to follow up with um, 
site visits, which we have been precluded from doing due to COVID in the last year, but we're looking to get on them in the, on the ground next year. And they're potentially an alternate sort of funding option for the porphyry going forward. After we do Peter, a Peter, sorry to interrupt you. Do you, uh, yeah. do you own these projects 100%? We do, yeah. They're all 100% owned. It's about 10% of the claims are just scattered individual claims that we've got uh, lease purchase arrangements on where we lease them with an option to buy, but that's probably less than 10% of the claims. So we, we put all these projects uh, together ourselves, which is quite expensive in Nevada. Um, so why Nevada? Talking about Nevada, well, if those that aren't familiar with Nevada, you can see here, it's, it's elephant country. It's got three main trends. Um, the uh, Carlin trend in the north, 150 million ounces. Gold strike, 50 million ounces. Carlin, 50 million ounces. The Battle Mountain trend where we've got the Colorback project, you know, is, is 100 million ounce uh, systems in there. Walker Lane trend, again, 50 million ounces of gold and silver. That's the Comstock load there. That's 8 million ounces of gold, 200 million ounces of silver. Historically, that uh, mine alone financed the Civil War. <laughs> and there's plenty of... <laughs> Plenty of good uh, mines all around, up and down that trend. And we've got two projects or three projects in this um, Walker Lane trend. So great infrastructure, pro mining, uh, no geopolitical risk at all, and uh, really underexplored, interestingly. Um, the Sierra Nevada company was established um, after 20 odd years of involvement in made discoveries with my previous company, GeoFlight, which was a company I had with my dad, which did uh, specialist airborne remote sensing work. And we worked on a number of projects throughout Nevada and have a large database, which we now own, and we've been using that to generate targets. So we worked on the pipeline deposit, 20 million ounces. My dad targeted that initially and the Long Canyon discovery later for MPI in Northern Nevada. Um, we put it together in 2011, group of, uh, Properties together, used Ken Snyder, who's a great friend, and he was um, uh, the guy that discovered the Ken Snyder mine, the Midas mine uh, for Franco Euro Nevada, and uh, a very well-known guy that uh, you know, put all his ideas into developing the projects. And we've invested 10 million since we started. To summarise the projects, you can see on the map on the right, there's the um, Blackhawk Epithermal and Porphyry project. They're coincident, they occur together. Um, the vein system we've, uh, is right adjacent to and forms part of the porphyry. Um, it's a tier one scale copper porphyry gold system, multiple high impact drill ready targets. We've done three or four million bucks worth of uh, IP and other geophysical work to target this already. So it's ready to drill. The epithermal, which occurs coincidentally, we put a discovery hole into that in 2018, got a 30 gram gold equivalent intercept, uh, just about 200 meters under an old mine. So we're pretty excited to follow that up, which we haven't yet had the opportunity to do. That's pretty well de-risked and we just uh, now got to drill it. Uh, Colourback is the one that occurs uh, around the uh, major pipeline Cortez system. Warrior is another high grade historic mining center. We've uh, got Bonanza graves there. We've got some historic uh, data in the, in the last year that, that on one of the levels underground, there was historic uh, assays there, 90 metres at 52 grams. So it's just yeah, incre great. incredible grades. Uh, and, and to think that these things, you know, if they're in Kalgoorlie, they'd have 5,000 holes in them. They've just never been tested. And, um, and they were all chasing the low-grade Carlin systems. And uh, these high-grade systems have got great potential. New Pass is another high-grade uh, uh, existing mine that... Uh, is ready to drill and is open in all directions. Um, so they're the five projects. As I say, any one of those could be a company maker. They're not uh, stocking fillers in there. There's uh, the Porphyry is obviously a, a different scale of project, but all these other ones could be company makers in their own right. Um, so that's uh, exciting. So in the time available, I won't, can't go into much detail on the projects, but I'll just give you a snapshot. For example, this next slide is the Blackhawk Porphyry. That's uh, you know a 20 square kilometer zone of interest. That's all the alteration related to it. If you compare it, for example, to the resolution deposit in Arizona, which is a joint venture between Rio and BHP, that's the, on the same scale. This is a um, is is a significant cross section through here that shows um, the the, uh, the potential targeting here the resolution deposit can fit four or five times in this anomaly. So it's a very significant system. And um, we've done uh, the chargeable response here. Anything better than light blue is highly anomalous. And we've got you know, this huge anomaly here 
Um, and that's the resolution system as it's mapped currently on the scale of our system. This bit out to the east here hasn't been explored much at all. These magenta things are all copper hits, so it's very significant the potential there. Um, the Blackhawk epithermal, which occurs coincidentally, this southern part is the porphyry, and the northern area is these uh, vein systems. That's got super grades, you can see all through there 13, 15, 5, 10 uh, gold, and high, very high silver as well, and also a lot of copper over it. I mean, magenta is all better than 500 uh, copper. So but um, Peter, is that is that historical drilling, or is that drilling that you've done? Over uh, the past they're all while? surface samples. We've drilled uh, four or five holes throughout here, just exploration holes. But that's all uh, we've done over eight hundred man hours of sampling across this, and this is all of the some of the major rock chip sampling and copper anomalies through there. That's our discovery hole. We put under this. This is our mine. We put it under the mine, hit the vein. Uh, down here and uh, got a you know, significant intercept, which has not been fill, uh, followed up. So we'll be drilling that pretty quick. And uh, bonanza rock samples all over it, which is what you can see. And 22 kilometers of un undrilled veins, so exciting. Um, so moving to the Calabac project, this is uh, you know, phenomenal. On that slide, that picture on the right, there's 70 million ounces in there, right? That's the Cortez Hills, perfect barrack. And uh, well, it's down Newmont Barrack Joint Venture, Nevada Gold Mines. The pipeline deposit, the one my dad worked on, and the initial targeting that's on the interface between the upthrown block here and the, the pediment. 20 million ounce deposit, an old mine that was sort of led them into this. This was found with drilling a sterilization hole for a dump, and uh, they, they tripped over it. But our thing, there's this big trend this way, another one coming through here. This uh, is the latest discovery Gold Rush four mile, which is extending up into here now. And it's all coming towards here. We've got a bit of a resource here, non dual, you know, 100 to 200,000 ounces of on the surface, which we've got to drill up. And there's some drilling on the left, you know, things like 10 metres at 2.3, 13 at 1.75, 15 at 1.1. So there's, there's um, significant leakage, significant mineralisation, and potential 100 million ounce sort of neighbourhood. Um, the Warrior Mine's another one of the historic ones, and this is what I referred to a little earlier. The underground workings, we've done a 3D model of this based on this data we got along the old drives, which um, is absolutely unbelievable. So 90 metres at 52 grams along here and then down this uh, shaft as well at depth, and that's remnant sampling from the stuff that was left behind by the mining. Um, so you can see amazing grades. And again, uh, it's never been, we put the land package together. There's a few owners in here and we put the whole lot together. It's never been tested. And we've got this significant agillary anomaly, which all this grade's heading towards. And, um, and we think that that's uh, high in sulfides and stuff. So it's never been mined by the old boys, but that's, uh, that we're drilling this actually before we list. So we're going to news as soon as we get listed. So really a significant upside there. Uh, New Pass, another high grade, uh, project number of mining centers, a couple of veins that in 17 grams, the old boy was mining this up to 10 years ago until I, I bought it off him recently. And uh, this is open down dip the long strike. And, uh, you know, we think a pretty rapid, uh, you know, one half million to million ounce deposit could be potentially drilled up here. Uh, and the project extends, this is the same mineralizations up here, and this is cover in between. So, we think there's a significant strike potential for this thing as well. So the key takeaways from, from this is, uh, well, we're in elephant country, tier one jurisdiction, easy to work, um, experienced team. We've got a, a discovery track record. We've got a good balanced portfolio. We like the copper exposure. We've got big company interest in that. It gives us an option. We should we choose to seek uh, non-dilutive funding. We can from that, we think. And uh, you know, world-class scale potential on the porphyry. Um, and uh, you know, strong news flow. So we're going to get into it and get aggressively into the drilling. And so that's our story. Peter Moore, uh, thank you very much. Leave no that worries. last slide up so we can, so people can uh, keep your contact details if they yeah, want to get I, a hold of you. Yep. Uh, that would be helpful. There. Now, for those on the call, if you'd like to ask a question of Peter about these very high grade copper, oh, sorry, gold and that copper pore free uh, deposit, pop your question into the Q&A box down below. Um, and if you're too slow, I'll start asking Peter questions, which I will do. Peter, um, let's just talk a little bit about why, I mean, clearly five really strong projects there. How do you choose from your children which one's going to take your focus? Because you've got five good ones. Yeah, that's it. Well, the, um, we did you know, consider actually... Um, 
uh, Kerry uh, splitting them up and not listing the whole lot together um, yeah. because they could have each formed a part of a, their own uh, IPO. We just chose to keep them together because we think it gives us a good exposure. So our focus primarily will be uh, getting a few holes into the copper porphyry because the upside there is you know, really substantial if we get a, a good result on a, a, a good copper hit, um, which we're hopeful of, obviously. And the other ones, uh, the, the historic mining centres are just so tantalising because they've never been tested. And we, we can test them with pretty shallow sort of RC drilling, which we can crack on with uh, fairly quickly. So New Pass and Warrior will drill um, fairly quickly. Uh, and Calabac, which is the big one around the pipeline Cortez region, uh, we need to do a bit of... Uh, and we're going to do seismic on that to try and identify the key target uh, zone uh, in there. And uh, and then we'll look at uh, putting some deep holes in there. So the, the, the historic mining centres will be the priority with uh, some holes going into the, some four holes going into the, uh, the porphyry as well. Peter, you mentioned your dad. Um, and I, I guess, was he... Um, working over in Nevada. What's the connection with Nevada? He's a, a professor of geology, Professor Bruce Moore. He's a professor of geology at the University of Kentucky. And he, uh, as a structural geologist, developed a high resolution multi spectral imaging system, which he used to map structure and, and associated um, coincident spectral anomalies, you know, which is a, a, a proprietary technology that we used for years uh, and consulted all over the world with that technology and, and I built that company with my dad but uh, and then we did quite a bit of work in Nevada so when we, in, in 10 years ago I got the data package back from a major project we did for MPI in um, which people might be familiar with that the Stool gold mine and all of that yep. and Ken Fletcher was involved in that we did a, we got that data back after 10 years so we reviewed the data and came up with some of these targets uh, out of that data so that's the history of it and uh, it was a good opportunity. We put the, the company together in a sort of counter-cyclical environment. There wasn't much interest in mining, so we were able to get some pretty good areas uh, locked away. Yeah, that, that was what I was going to ask because there's a lot of, um, I mean, Nevada is on the map and it surprised me that you were able to put such strong, such a strong portfolio of projects together. Um, did it take you a long time? And you, you mentioned that you'd spent 10 million was a lot of that money spent on the acquisition of the projects or uh, on the drilling in the soil sap? Where uh, well, a lot of it was on exploration, Kerry. The, the land uh, acquisition is fairly expensive exercise, so that, that did take some funding. But the um, yeah, we, we've actually morphed into an ex a privately funded exploration company, so we have done some pretty aggressive exploration, drilling at Calabac, uh, lots of um, geophysics and aeromagnetics and all of that stuff that we would potentially do in Australia as a matter of course, we applied that to the Nevada scenario. And it's not done over there that much because the land tenure positions are a lot smaller. People hold smaller parcels of land. So we flew land we didn't own and then went and got the land when we think when we targeted it. So it's a pretty uh, uh, a pretty gutsy sort of approach. But we Very as a result of that we got some really good uh, we really got some good uh, some good targets and some, some good coverage, you know. So most of the areas had a few old timers had claims, you know, twenty acre claims, maybe four or five claims. Then we went in and surrounded them with a thousand claims, and then uh, negotiated and, and managed to get their <laughs> deal. So yeah, it's uh, it was an interesting exercise. But that's called no, no, no way out, Peter. Yeah, that's um, it. Yeah. Uh, only one option, us. Has. The, the, you're not listing on the stock exchange until quarter Q1 next year. What sort of, uh, what are you doing between now and then? Uh, well, and we're getting into the winter season now. We The issue we were trying to list this year, but we're just running out of time because uh, and the market's pretty crowded. So uh, we're going to continue drilling. We're drilling the Warrior project. We've got a real rig schedule to go in there in the next month. Um, and we will start drilling uh, probably over at uh, the Blackhawk project as well. Uh, prior to listing, we'll, we'll get that going in February. Um, so we should have uh, some early news, you know, after after uh, after we list, and uh, and we're keen to get sort of cracking on the drilling. We did a pre-IPO round uh, uh, a few months ago um, with our and existing shareholders. Uh, finished oversubscribed two and a half million in a, in a day. So um, we, <laughs> we so and we didn't get unfortunately uh, our sponsoring broker, our managing broker was Bell Potter, 
I don't get any of that, but uh, it was just uh, because the demand from our support from our currency holders has been great. So, uh, so we've got plenty of funding um, and ready to go with the IPO, and we just felt it was better to uh, get an opportunity to market it properly in, in February and then uh, list in March. Okay, so tell me, Peter, um, for the listeners uh, on this call and those that will watch it uh, on the replay, why do you think it's a good investment opportunity? Now, look, I get it. You've got five great projects, extraordinary uh, results that you're getting out, very high grades, uh, but you spent 10 million. You've got a, it's quite a tight registry. I, I note that board management have got almost 20%. Just explain the, I guess, the investment thesis behind this and why you think when you list, guys, get involved. Well, I think the... the, the um... Obviously, the attraction is the quality of the projects, and the the um, and w what we've been able to do privately is advance these projects to a stage where the the targeting is already done. Generally, when you invest in these things, one project has a bit of work on it or some historic drilling or whatever that's been revamped, and then there's a whole process that you need to go through in order to generate targets. You know, shoot seismic or shoot. Uh, IP and, and, and geophysics and all of that to generate targets. This that work's already been done. So the advantage for the investor is you're coming into a project where we're hitting the ground drilling, where we'll have uh, three or four rigs going and um, uh, giving us sort of maximum opportunity. And we know uh, mining speculative and exploration, but these projects that with the work that's been done have been de-risked significantly. So uh, while they're risky exploration, it's a good opportunity we think to to make a discovery fairly quickly. And it, um, just just to remind us again, what the, the, you want to really have a look at that copper porphyry, don't you? We do. The, the issue with the copper porphyry is for a small company, they're they're challenging because they're big projects, and particularly this one's a very big uh, project. But we have strong interest from majors uh, to get involved in it. It's a pretty compelling uh, story. It's in a great location, and it's never been. It's not that far from Bingham Canyon, which is uh, oh, yeah. which is. Uh, you know, the, the big Rio project near Salt Lake City. So, um, you know, those sort of companies are interested in it because of where it is. And uh, in a long strike, we've had uh, Yarrington and other copper projects. So there are copper porphyries in the trend as well. Um, so, yeah, we think it's uh, worth putting a few holes in ourselves <coughs> because, um, you know, there's substantial upside if we can... Um, if we can so, yeah. so Peter, just to get it clear, you, you'll put a couple of holes in yourself to try and see whether you can get a little bit more, maybe hit hit a bit more of the mother load, so to speak. Yeah. To get is that to give you um, uh, leverage over the majors that are going to will it will have that effect. I mean, a discovery will give us <laughs> extreme extreme leverage, but uh, we think that uh, there's some really great targets in there that we want to test uh, before we. You know, while we're having those conversations with the majors about uh, how to take the project forward, so uh, yeah, we, we, we'll we'll just see how that pans out. But we we're going to we intend to explore it ourselves uh, initially. Well, congratulations, yeah. Peter. You have put together uh, as you some some cracking projects over there. I'll look forward to the news flow as it comes out and the uh, the IPO next year. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to get involved. Uh, there's Peter's email on the screen right now and uh, listing in Q1 next year. Uh, Peter Moore, Executive Chairman of Sierra Nevada Gold, congratulations and thanks for joining us at the end uh, of thanks, the Thanks, Gary, and we'll have a website up in the next few weeks, so uh, good to look for that too. There's a bit more detail on it. Thanks very much. Cheers, Peter.